You think Rome was all marble columns and gladiators? Think again. Before Rome had generals conquering the world, before Caesar crossed the Rubicon, before anyone even dreamed of pasta carbonara, Rome had one massive problem. Mud, swamps, and let's be honest here, a lot of poop. The solution they built is still working today, 20,600 years later. It's called the Cloaca Maxima, literally the Great Sewer. And it's the oldest functioning sewer system on Earth. But here's the kicker. It didn't even start as a sewer. Plot twist worthy of a Netflix series, right? Picture this. You're building the future capital of the world, but your construction site looks like a Louisiana bayou mixed with a medieval cesspit. That was Rome in 600 BC, the area that would become the Forum Romano, the beating heart of civilization, was basically a mosquito-infested swamp where malaria threw parties every summer. So what did the Romans do? They built something so effective that it makes modern city planning look like amateur hour. Welcome to the underground world of Rome's dirtiest secret. Back in the 6th century BC, when the world was still figuring out basic hygiene, King Tarquinius Priscus looked at Rome's seven hills and saw a problem. Between those hills? Swampland that would make Shrek feel at home. The future Forum Romano was underwater half the year and muddy the other half. Imagine trying to build the New York Stock Exchange in the Everglades. That's essentially what early Romans faced. Tarquinius wasn't building a sewer, he was building a drain. Think of it like urban liposuction, sucking out all the nasty water that made the area uninhabitable. The goal was simple, turn swamp into real estate. Classic Roman efficiency. They called it the cloaca maxima, which sounds fancy, but literally means big drain. Romans weren't exactly subtle with their naming conventions. It's like calling the Empire State Building really tall house. The name also honored Cloacina, the goddess of sewers and drains. Yes, Romans had a goddess for sewage. There, they had gods for everything. If it existed, there was probably a divine being supervising it. Modern HR departments could learn something here. The original structure was basically a massive open canal. Picture a concrete river carrying water and debris straight to the Tiber River. It collected streams from three hills, channeled them through what would become the Forum, and dumped everything into Rome's main waterway. It worked like a charm. Suddenly, Romans could build where their ancestors had been getting their sandals muddy. The transformation was so dramatic, it's like watching a swamp become Manhattan and fast forward. Fast forward 300 years. Rome's growing like a startup that just got venture capital funding. Space is premium, real estate prices are through the roof, and that open canal is taking up valuable construction space. So the Romans did what any practical civilization would do. They covered it up and turned it into a proper sewer system. It's the ancient equivalent of putting a parking garage underground to free up surface space. This wasn't just covering a ditch with stones. They connected the system to public latrines called foricae, basically ancient versions of truck stop bathrooms, but classier. These weren't your modern private stalls. Romans sat side by side on marble benches with holes, chatting about politics while doing their business. Social distancing was not a Roman concept. The genius move came in the first century AD when they integrated the whole thing with Rome's 11 aqueducts. Picture this. Fresh water flows in through aqueducts. People use it for drinking, bathing, and fountain displays. Then the used water gets a second job flushing waste through the sewer system. It's like having a car that runs on recycled coffee, efficient and slightly disturbing. The Romans basically invented the circular economy 2,000 years before anyone called it that. Water had a career path. Start clean and important. End up moving poop. From VIP to janitor in one hydraulic cycle. The system was so well designed that continuous water flow kept everything moving. No clogs, no backups, no calling ancient Roman plumbers. Though honestly, Roman plumbers probably had better job security than modern ones. When Romans built something, they didn't mess around. The Cloaca Maxima stretches about 600 meters, roughly six football fields of underground tunnel. But here's where it gets impressive. The thing is huge. 
We're talking 2.7 to 3.3 meters high and 2.1 to 4.5 meters wide. You could literally walk through it without bumping your head. In fact, you could probably drive a small car through some sections. It's less sewer pipe and more underground highway for waste. Romans built it using massive stone blocks, bricks, and their secret weapon, Opus Cementicium, aka Roman concrete. This stuff makes modern concrete look like Play-Doh. They mixed volcanic ash, pozzolana, lime, and water to create something so durable, it laughs at earthquakes and time at itself. Dionysus of Halicarnassus, a historian who clearly knew how to complement infrastructure, said, The extraordinary greatness of the Roman Empire manifests itself above all in three things, the aqueducts, the paved roads, and the construction of the sewers. Basically, Rome's greatest hits were water in, roads across, and waste out. Simple formula, legendary results. The construction quality was so over-engineered, it's like building a nuclear bunker to store garden tools. But that's exactly why it's still functioning today, while other ancient civilizations left behind ruins you can't even identify. Some sections have arched ceilings that would make cathedral architects jealous. Romans turned functional infrastructure into architectural art. It's the equivalent of making a garbage truck look like a Ferrari. The whole system was designed with Roman precision. Perfect gradients for water flow, strategic access points for maintenance, and materials chosen for maximum durability. They built for eternity, not quarterly earnings reports. Building the Cloaca Maxima wasn't exactly a dream job. According to Pliny the Elder, working conditions were so brutal that some workers chose suicide over continuing the project. That's ancient Rome's version of a one-star glass door review. The workforce consisted mainly of semi-forced labor from Rome's poorest citizens. Think of it as community service, but with life-threatening working conditions and no time off for good behavior. These weren't slaves, but they weren't exactly volunteers either. The labor force included different tiers. Servi publici, public slaves, who belonged to the state and handled municipal services, and specialized workers organized into collegia, basically ancient labor unions. Rome had 268 different registered professions, including various types of construction and maintenance workers. Maintenance was serious business. Rome employed up to 700 people just to maintain the aqueducts, and there was a special government position called curator of waters. Imagine having chief water officer on your ancient Roman business card. Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, Caesar Augustus's best friend and Rome's infrastructure superhero, personally supervised maintenance of the Cloaca Maxima in 33 BC. The guy literally sailed through sections of the sewer in a boat, probably as a political stunt to show he cared about infrastructure. Talk about hands-on leadership. Picture a modern mayor navigating city sewers in a kayak for a photo op. That's basically what Agrippa did except with more toga and less safety equipment. The workers who maintained these systems had job security that modern city employees would envy. After all, everyone needs clean water coming in and waste going out. It's recession-proof work with guaranteed demand. The Cloaca Maxima didn't just solve Rome's drainage problem. It accidentally created a public health revolution. By draining the swamps, Romans eliminated mosquito breeding grounds and effectively ended malaria in the city. Malaria was so common, it was literally called Roman fever. This infrastructure project allowed Rome to support over one million inhabitants, a population size that wouldn't be matched by another European city until London in the 19th century. The Cloaca Maxima basically enabled the first megacity in Western civilization. The transformation was spectacular. Rome converted swampland into the Forum Romano, the beating heart of the ancient world. Temples, basilicas, and government buildings rose where mosquitoes used to rule. It's like turning a Louisiana bayou into Washington, D.C. The system became a model copied throughout the Roman Empire. Whenever Romans conquered a new territory, guess what came with the legions? That's right, sewers. They exported their sanitation technology like an ancient franchise operation. But the system had limitations that would make modern city planners cringe. Not every building was connected to the main system. 
Many apartment buildings had latrines and water sources only on the ground floor, forcing upper floor residents to throw waste directly into the streets. Imagine living in a high-rise where garbage disposal means opening your window. Street cleaning services didn't exist, so those streets got pretty nasty. Think medieval London, but with better architecture and more sophisticated sewage systems. Modern research from Cambridge University reveals the system wasn't perfect for disease control. Studies show that intestinal parasites and worms actually increased with the Roman sewer system, possibly due to communal bathhouses using warm water perfect for parasite transmission, and the use of human waste as fertilizer without proper composting. So while Romans solved the malaria problem, they accidentally created new health challenges. It's like solving traffic congestion by building more roads, then discovering you've created air pollution instead. In 2012, archaeological authorities commissioned a high-tech investigation of the Cloaca Maxima using a specially designed amphibious robot because when you want to explore a 2,600-year-old sewer, you don't send humans. You send robots. Smart thinking. The results were concerning. The investigation found blockages and structural problems that could cause irreparable damage or flooding that would put lives at risk. Apparently, even Roman engineering has its limits after two and a half millennia. Who knew? The robot investigation revealed that casual strolls through these tunnels aren't recommended until repairs are made. So if you were planning an underground Roman vacation, maybe stick to the Colosseum tours instead. Today, the Cloaca Maxima still drains rainwater from central Rome, running beneath the ancient Forum Romano at about 12 meters below current street level. It's like having a 20,600-year-old basement that still works for flood control. Early 20th century construction projects were connected to the ancient system, and engineers used it for drainage again, despite the tunnels never being completely mapped. Imagine connecting modern plumbing to a system that's older than most religions. Recent sections have been connected to Rome's modern sewer network, mainly to handle problems with riverback flow. The ancient and modern systems work together like a grandfather teaching his grandson the family business. Archaeological discoveries continue revealing aspects of Roman sanitation engineering. Recent excavations in Turkey found Roman sewer systems that are 2,250 years old and still functioning. In Diyarbakir province, archaeologists discovered an 1,800-year-old Roman sewer system measuring 6.5 meters long, 75 centimeters high, and 40 centimeters wide. Romans being Romans, they couldn't just build functional infrastructure. They had to make it culturally significant, too. Multiple monuments were built directly over the sewer system, including a sanctuary in the Forum Romano dedicated to Venus Cloacina, literally Venus of the sewer. Yes, Romans built a shrine to the goddess of love over their sewage system. That's either profound spiritual symbolism or the world's strangest urban planning decision. Probably both. The famous Boca della Verità, Mouth of Truth, now located in the Church of Santa Maria in Cosmedon, was originally one of the decorative covers for the sewer system. This massive marble piece, 1.7 meters in diameter, possibly represents Jupiter Amon and demonstrates how Romans applied artistic sophistication even to functional infrastructure elements. Imagine if New York City made manhole covers so beautiful they became tourist attractions. That's basically what Romans achieved. They turned sewer infrastructure into art installations. The Arch of Janus also stands over parts of the original sewer route, showing how Romans integrated spiritual, artistic, and practical functions in their urban design. They built monuments that honored gods while covering the engineering that kept their city healthy. This integration of form and function, sacred and practical, represents Roman civilization at its most sophisticated. They understood that infrastructure could be both utilitarian and beautiful, functional and meaningful. The artistic elements weren't just decoration. They were statement pieces declaring that Roman engineering deserved honor and recognition. They elevated sewage management to an art form which is either genius or completely insane, depending on your perspective. The Cloaca Maxima has survived for 2,600 years through the rise and fall of the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire, 
the Dark Ages, the Renaissance, two world wars, terms the invention of social media, that's more staying power than most marriages, governments, or Netflix series. This ancient sewer system enabled urban life on an unprecedented scale, proving that sometimes the most unglamorous infrastructure creates the most lasting civilizations. Rome conquered the world with roads and legions, but it built an empire on good plumbing. The engineering principles behind the Cloaca Maxima, gravity flow, durable materials, integrated systems, and overbuilt capacity remain fundamental to modern urban planning. Romans essentially wrote the textbook on municipal engineering that we're still using today. While Caesar's conquests made headlines and gladiator fights sold tickets, it was the unsung heroes working underground who made Roman civilization possible. They built the foundation that allowed everything else to flourish. Today, as cities worldwide struggle with aging infrastructure, the Cloaca Maxima stands as testament to the value of building things right the first time. Romans didn't just solve their immediate drainage problem. They created a system that would serve their city for millennia. So the next time you flush a toilet or walk down a city street without stepping in sewage, remember the Romans who figured this out 2,600 years ago. They proved that great civilizations aren't just built on grand ideas and military might. They're built on really, really good plumbing. Empires rise and fall, but a well-built sewer system? That's forever. And honestly, that might be the most Roman lesson of all, engineer for eternity, because you never know who might need to use your bathroom in the next couple thousand years.